Hey what's up everybody, Trofinet here and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In this show we talk about specific Gwent cards or interesting decks to play around with. Ever since I first laid eyes on the new cards introduced in the Novigrad expansion, I had the idea to make a shield themed deck. With the new 3.1 patch just released, buffing and changing a lot of northern realms, this feels like the perfect time to make this happen. So today we will be talking about the shield up deck and Gwent's 3.1 patch that changes a whole lot of the game. The developers had a specific goal in mind when they worked on patch 3.1. Reduce the amount of damage lower level units can dish out, remove reach from all cards and buff the survivability and identity of the Northern Realms faction. The latter was achieved by boosting the overall power of units, changing some abilities to rely less on charges, adding a few new keywords and adding formation to a lot of existing order units to make them more viable. I'm not going to talk about the new keywords too much since they don't appear in the deck aside from one, but we'll get to that in a second. First, the deck. As always, you can check the deck composition on screen or in the description down below if you want to try this deck out for yourself. The Shield Up deck is led by Queen Meave and focuses on survivability and of course, shields. Patch 3.1 even added a few new abilities to existing cards, which made me change my deck a bit, which is why I didn't have an episode last week. They kinda threw a wrench in my idea at first, but the deck became a lot stronger for it. Shields are pretty straightforward. When a unit has a shield, it nullifies the next hit of damage it receives, regardless of the amount of damage. After that, the shield breaks and is removed. It's a great way to protect your units indirectly as well. Your opponent will be less likely to waste a high power attack on a shield, because they will rarely gain from it, allowing you to get your engines going. Your opponent needs to get rid of that shield first anyway if he wants to do anything. This does not protect your unit from banish or destruction abilities however, including poison, so keep that in mind. Shields will also be removed when your units are purified. So with all that in mind, this deck actually has two main plans of attack. One focuses on continuous boosting combined with some reactionary damage, and the other focuses on generating shields and turning them into points. Let's talk about the boosting path first since this has been a staple for Northern Realms ever since Homecoming. The main idea is that you try to avoid providing boosts to units without an extra purpose so you always double your gain. The easy targets here are the Tridem infantry units and Nathaniel Pastodi. The first damages a random enemy by one every time he gets boosted and the second applies bleeding for two turns to a random enemy unit when that happens instead. This also triggers on vitality, so we have a few cards that can apply this as well just to make this work. Runeward adds four turns of vitality and a shield which is great to both protect the damage boosters and having them trigger every turn. Kira Metz's ability was also changed in patch 3.1. She now adds vitality to her adjacent units equal to those units' respective base power. This can set you up for massive damage potential without you needing to touch the board anymore afterwards. You can also use Queen Adalia to create an Olic Tridem infantry unit quickly and giving it a shield, bringing the possible total damage boosters in this deck to 4. Tridem infantries and Nathaniel Pastodi will be your main damage dealers in this deck but they're not the only ones that benefit from boosts. Anna Stranger is an auto-include by now. Before patch 3.1 she boosted her adjacent units by one each turn, as long as she was boosted. Right now however, she always boosts the units on her right by one, and boosts the other one when she has boosted herself, marked by the new keyword, Inspired. Inspired abilities therefore only trigger when the unit in question is boosted. Prince Anseis is a great heavy hitter. With formation he either gains zeal when played on the melee row or is boosted by one when played on the ranged row. He deals 4 damage on order under normal circumstances but can duel an enemy instead if he's boosted, again noted by the inspired keyword. Dueling means that he damages a unit by his power and that unit does the same in return, going back and forth until one of them is dead. If you give Anseis a shield however, he can deal damage equal to his power twice because the first hit of your opponent is nullified because of the shield. Boosting him as well just gives you the possibility to kill pretty much anything. The last unit to benefit from boosts does so indirectly. Visigurd can damage an enemy unit by one on order, but gains an extra charge for every boosted ally on the board when he's played. He also has formation, so could technically spend all his charges the moment he is played, making him incredibly powerful. Aside from Anna Stranger, we also have a few other ways to boost units. We have our leader, Meave, who can boost the unit by one every two turns. Visogota is super powerful if he can stay alive and on the ranged row, able to boost the unit by one and gaining a charge for every card played on the board. 
Knighthood boosts a random unit on a row by one and does this six times in a row. Perfect for when you only have a Tritum Infantry or Nathaniel on a single row. And last but not least we have the Botchling, which at first damages the highest enemy unit by one at the end of your turn, but can change to a Lubberkin, which boosts your lowest unit instead at the end of your turn. Swapping between Botchling and Lubberkin, or vice versa, also resets this unit, which can net you some points as well since it heals off any damage. So there's a lot of potential with just boosting, but things get better. We haven't even talked about shields yet. The key card in this deck is new from the Novigrad expansion and it's called Prophet Lebioda. This saint is a dual faction card with Syndicate, has 6 power and gives a shield to any unit played next to it, basically making him a shield engine. He can give shields to anyone that doesn't already have one, protecting any card you play instantly. The Centurion Artificer can provide a shield as well on order with the formation modifier. And when he cavalry has also changed in patch 3.1, now starting with a shield and boosting himself by 2 whenever he loses that shield. Windhelm of Atre starts with a shield and boosts himself by 2 at the end of each of your turns, making him a great points engine. Lady of the Lake also starts with a shield and can give another unit one as well on order. So along with Queen Adalia, we have a bunch of options to generate shields, but there's one more final thing we can do. King Rögner actually has a very cool ability you can use as a finisher. Rögner removes all shields on the board and boosts himself by 3 for each one removed. This includes enemy shields and can ramp up quickly if you manage to keep your shields active during the round. Even with just 2 shields he already nets you 10 points and if you play him next to Libioda he gains a shield himself which he immediately removes for an extra 3 points as well. Finally, we have some minor one-hit damage additions in the Centurion Spellweaver and the Ketwenny Revenant, so you can easily destroy Sabrina, who is also included in this deck. While Rugner is our points-based finisher, we also have a more aggressive finisher in the Bloody Baron. His ability was also changed in patch 3.1. He now has 7 power, can reset a unit on order with a formation modifier, and if he's inspired when using his ability, he also adds bleeding to the affected unit for an amount equal to the amount of boosts he removed. You can even use him defensively by resetting one of your damaged units if your opponent has no boosted units. Resetting also means he could remove a lock from one of your units if necessary, but you would better use Kutkodak for that purpose instead, since he purifies his adjacent units when played. When playing this deck, try to focus on either the boosting combos with Anna Strenger and Visigota in combination with one or two Tridem infantry units and Nathaniel, or on generating shields and finishing with Rögner in any one round. Mixing is definitely also possible depending on the situation to protect, for example, your boost engines, but keep in mind that Rögner might be useless if your shields are getting destroyed quickly. Setting up some loops with the damage boosters and vitality can really disorient your opponent points-wise especially if you add Nathaniel. Trying to account for both vitality and bleeding on the board when deciding when to pass can be tricky if you're not paying attention and you can capitalize on that by passing early if you have the upper hand and a good series of engines set up. And that's basically it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode on the updated Northern Realms faction and the Shield Up deck. Got any other ideas on how to improve this deck? Don't hesitate to leave advice in the comment section down below so we can help each other out, which is why we're here. Any feedback is greatly appreciated. Check me out on Twitter at, at @trophynut, so that's T R O V N U T if you want to talk. And if you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? Any support is really appreciated. Thanks enormously for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Goodbye.